Welcome to the JLU 2.0 build. Figured I'd start off by talking a little bit about the uh, custom paintwork. I got a little bit ahead of uh, the build here, but I wanted to go ahead and get the paint down um, and, you know, kind of get ahead, get the handles on there, get some of that tedious work done. Um, I didn't use the Biddy Design uh, liquid mask. That was really, really tough to get in there and cut with an X-Acto. Um, so I just used the masking for the windows that was provided. And then I used uh, Tamiya tape mask and just masking tape to mask the fenders and the roof, the bigger areas. And the as far as paint wise, like I looked and looked for PS grays and they just like, to me it makes the Corsa gray that's kind of a bluish gray, but there's just not much out there, if anything. So I ended up doing a little research and I went with a TS gray that's meant for hard plastics. And I, what I did was I laid down uh, a flat PS on the inside and then laid down the TS gray over that uh, so it's you know it's adhering to paint and then the PS flat is adhering to the uh, Lexan and that seems to work pretty well have no issues thus far um, then I did silver over everything and I masked the fenders from the inside because I wanted those gray if you see them um, and then I had to flat coat the grays on the outside because no matter if you flat on the inside, everything is shiny with the Lexan on the outside. So if you want a flat look, you've got to come back on the outside and mask and add that. So I added that here. Um, and the grill, you can see, I didn't notice this until after I laid the silver down. I had a little black overspray, which is unfortunate. Um, let me know in the comments if I should just melt this body and start over. But, uh, I decided, you know, I'll live with it and, uh, you know, maybe once this thing's said and done, you won't notice it with everything going on. Uh, so this is a little road tar got sprayed up on the front. But you can see I'm prepped for lighting. Um, and uh, yeah, pretty uh, pumped about this color scheme. Um, I know Jeep did make the factory gray fenders and uh, actually this silver with gray I don't know on the JLUs, but on the older uh, two-door Wranglers, they did uh, whatever's got the circular headlights. Is it the, it's not the JK, is it the YJ? I think it's the YJ, the TJ with not the square headlight two-door. Anyways. Um, enough about the body. Let's let's get going. This is really going to focus on getting started on the chassis and front axle and uh, bumper fitment, uh, getting that fitted to the frame. So let's get going. All right, got this Hobby Plus CR24 winch bumper on without much issue at all. Just a little dribbling out of the Hobby Plus mount to mate with the SCX24 mount. 
So now I'm moving on to the front axle uh, zone here and I'm trying out some new products here on this build. They usually go with Treel because I like the black brass. Uh, this is Dubro. It's actually a gray coated brass. So that's gonna, I think, go with the theme of this. So I'm gonna try those out. Um, I've got the Trio OD gears. Um, I'm gonna put in these GPM plus five axles, see if the weights will work with the RC four wheel drive inner wheel weights. They didn't on the plus four axles. So I've got backup hot racing axle weights just in case. Got the Emacs tray and servo. I'm trying out a new diff here, this Samix. It's also black brass, but it's got these brass cuts on the side. Um, actually pretty nice. Nice looking diff. So another new piece. I'm gonna use these GPM skids that I like uh, to protect that. And then I've got a no-name uh, China uh, front axle housing. So that should round out uh, the front axle minus the steering links. So I'm gonna get to that. All right, just a quick update here on the progress of the front axle. Um, had a little bit of fitment issue with this Samix diff cover. The, uh, the bearing that fits in the top uh, that you know, goes on one side of the worm gear uh, you know, it sits in this position. It didn't fully seat. Um, you see there's kind of a lip around the, the edge there. It kind of set up almost even with that lip. Um, I don't know if it just wasn't machined deep enough or what, but the solution to that was to take out the little um, O-rings you know, you can have these on each side uh, of that worm gear. So removing these, you know, one on each end of the worm gear was just enough um, width to let that diff cover seat. Um, so it seats in there, everything turns smooth. I had the same issue with these uh, GPM axles had to uh, you know take the Dremel and cut the slot a little bit deeper. They were bucking at full lock. Um, the Dubro knuckles are kind of nice. They're they're a little less bulky than Treel, um, which is is kind of nice. They're almost like a instead of a gray, they're almost like a gunmetal look to them. Um, they probably go pretty nice with the gunmetal trio. I think they're a little different color, but they're, they're I don't know, they kind of look gray sometimes. They kind of look almost bronze gunmetal sometimes. Um, so anyways, that's together, and I was test fitting my 15 gram GPM wheel weights or axle weights. And they still, they don't fit this way, you know, I've shaved off the back already, but they don't fit. I guess I need to sand that inner edge out and see if this will poke on there. All right, where were we? Got these cleaned out and sanding them down. So I've already sanded that back edge off, so I've removed a little bit of a depth um, issue that we had there to the pin. Um, so if I pull these through, there's, there's plenty of room, um, so let me get a pin on here. Well, I've got one inserted in this tire already.
just a little bit of wiggle room on the back. snug there's no bind here I've got wiggle the weight the weight's not binding up against the knuckle or the wheel it's got just a little bit of it's really not any play in and out but it's got just a hair bit of movement there so that's perfect so that's 30 grams at the wheels 15 for this wheel weight and then the RC four-wheel drive inner wheel weight is 15. Um, so that's that's what I was trying to accomplish on the uh, JLU 1.0 trail truck but the four millimeter axles the plus four just don't give you enough these plus five if you shave off the back edge smooth so these are I guess a hair less than 15 grams and then you run them reverse so they can kind of seat back over that knuckle. Then they can, you know, they don't rub, they don't bind. They just barely, look at that. That is just, could not get any better right there. Now, I don't know if this will work with the trail knuckles because they are bulkier. And that, you see the interface there. I think trail may have a bulkier um piece right here so that may affect it um but they work they work like money with these so i think i'll run these in the front and i'll run the hot racing fives in the back with the inner wheel weights we've got a little more weight up front but a little bit of fiddling, as always, uh, a little bit of fitment issue with any and everything, but uh, it's come together. So I'll get this servo on there and then get this all bolted back and I may just throw on a metal link, steering link for now, temporary one until I get the one in that I ordered. Um, so there you go. All right, we are up and running. Got the servo. The axle reinstalled. Um, everything has got good clearance now. I had to rework the clearance on the front bumper mount. And of course, as usual, had to clearance the Emacs servo a little bit. Uh, you kind of have to trim those top ears off. And that's pretty typical. Um, and I had to chamfer the inside edge of both of these mounts and I've had to do that on all of them as well and then you can see here on this bumper mount I had to clearance since the C-Max is deeper it sticks forward um, it's got a shorter servo horn but it actually is a little more forward than the servo saver that comes on the stock servo just because of the position of this so this gets clearance, and then when it's cocked, it gets clearance, and then I had to chamfer the underside as well, you can see there. And that's for the screw that's coming through the servo horn. So when it's at full lock and it's twisted up, it's got clearance. And it still taps a hair, but I'm going to wait till I get my you know, permanent steering link in that I want and then see if that is an issue and I may just have to trim off that screw and then the other issue is the tips of the bumper I'm getting contact uh, with the tires <clears throat> so I move the body mount up a position and that's you know also in preparation for magnets um, so I may body lift the rear to get a little more height. Um, I'm hitting when I turn. I'm rubbing right there on the fender. But it's the bumper, and especially if there's any compression, 
Like, I may not hit it, but if I'm twisted at all, I really just, you know, dig into the tire with it. So these aren't the tires I'm going to be running. They just, they're the RC four wheel drive wheels that had the full sim inner wheel weights that I needed to see if those fit. So that's why I've just got one set uh, wide stance on the front right now. But um, so I'm going to wait on fiddling with the bumper ends anymore until I get the tires and wheels on there. And also the shocks, they may lift it as well, get the position I want. So ultimately, you just want to get the body lifted, you know, get the body where it wants to be ultimately before I start, you know, trimming that bumper or playing with any more fitness. Uh, there you go, see when it's twisted. It's hot. Um, so I think that's it right now for this first uh, little stage, just kind of get the front end together. Um, you know, until I get a, a, that front link piece, just I need a few key pieces, uh, and they should arrive in the next few days, and then this should move right along. Um, I may move to the rear axle area and the belly, uh, and hopefully the links, maybe just take care of the chassis uh, all at once on the next build. So I think that's it right now. I uh, hope you enjoyed, and I'll be coming back at it uh, soon, hopefully.